My name's John Mortimer and what I do is I go into organisations and I help them to change the way that they work, reinvent their approaches to what they do. And one of the things that I've found that is the most interesting and important things that I can do is to help people to understand complexity and how that is different to what they actually currently do at the moment. So what about complexity? What, what is it? Well, that's what this video is about. When I started to look into complexity, I started to read about it and I found it was very difficult to understand and even more difficult to put into practice. So I thought, huh, what am I going to do? So I went into the background to what complexity was actually about. And it was actually a lot more straightforward than I had read. The issues with complexity is that it's different to our normal ways of thinking. So what I've done is I've put together a framework that I use when I help managers and leaders to understand complexity. And I'm going to be showing you that framework here. And we can then apply this to any situation within an organization. How we design it, how we manage, how we understand how an organization works, how we deal with things, whether they're short term or long term, how we help to ensure that teams work well together, how we do change. So where I'm going to start is I'm going to be talking about two different types of situations. The first type are logical situations and the second type are complex. So let's start with logical ones. Logical things are those things that are sequential. They follow a pattern. One cause leads to an effect. And we're very familiar with that. That's kind of a very logical, structured approach. And it's actually the way that, that the main way that we work in organizations today. We use logical methods for everything that we do, basically. And those types of lo logical situations can be looked at as either being simple or complicated. So our response to that is that we apply logic. We see a problem or we see a situation and we go into that situation and we analyze it. The more detail, the better. The more data, the better. The more we can understand, the more control we can have over it. And therefore, we can predict it much better than what we could have done before. So this is great. And the example of a logical situation in an organization could be a process, a service like uh, renewing passports. That's a very structured, logical flow. And that flow isn't going to change very much. And the variation into that flow is going to be very low. So it's basically standard approach. The other type of situation are comp complex ones. Now, these are interesting. The idea of a complex situation is one where we don't really understand what's going on. We may not be able to understand how it links with causes. It may sit outside of our area of control. When we look at it, or we look at it again, it keeps changing. When we try to understand how it works, it may appear to be non-linear. It doesn't follow a sequential pattern. And the interesting thing about complexity is that sometimes we try to solve it, and it doesn't get solved. It just keeps on hanging around. It morphs into something else. It pops up somewhere else. So very often there are no clear solutions to these kind of situations or problems. The examples in an organization of where complexity might be are if you look at how teams work, teams made up of people from different departments. Does that always work well? What about the conflicts between different departments? What about the way that actually organizations really work? Do they really work logically or are they very often in a state of chaos or confusion. This is about understanding that actually we're not just always logical. We're human beings. 
And one of the characteristics of a human being is that we are actually very often complex, as well as being logical. So how do we deal with that? Well, the way that we deal with that is very different to how we deal with logical things. So what we do is we, we adapt, we, we go into that situation, we dive into the situation, we try and understand how it works. What we're going to do is we immerse ourselves into there. We physically go there and we talk to different people and we look at it from different perspectives. And maybe we engage other people in doing this. We try and make sense of what's going on. And as we do that, we might try and tweak something. We might try and change something and see what happens. And as we do that, we start to get to know how it works. And we might do that more than once. And over time, we start to understand how we can deal with that complexity, even though that complexity may remain. So we repeat the loop. You can see actually how this is very different. Instead of actually going in to analyze something in detail, we're going to be more standing back and looking at how it actually fits into the whole system. Let's summarize now. There are two types of situations, logical and complex. And they both need different approaches and different methods to understand and resolve them. One of the first things that I realized is that I was always dealing with situations in organizations in logical ways, regardless of what it was. So if you have a complex situation and you apply a logical method to that, it probably isn't going to work. It may push that situation into something different. It might push it elsewhere. It may appear to be resolved when in fact it then reappears later on. And it might actually cause that situation to get worse. So when I now look within organizations, I look at them with these two different perspectives. Um, and I can see that the way that we work at the moment, especially when we look at digital solutions or digital approaches, what type of situations is digital best suited to? The reason that we are very familiar with logical approaches, but less familiar with complex ones, is down to someone called Frederick Taylor. Over a hundred years ago, he developed a way of understanding how organizations work and how to manage them. And he called that scientific management. And that came from all the success of the Industrial Revolution. In fact, it became the mainstream. From there, we had automation, we had management accounting, we developed measures, we developed the professionalism of management. And all of these followed Taylor's rules. And Taylor was about creating structures within the organization to manage the organization. The organization like a machine. So imagine a machine with all the cogs whirring and if there's a problem there, we'll go to the specific place, we'll analyze it and we'll replace that part. And if we want that machine to work well, we make sure that every part is working well. And if you see the people and the roles that we have in the organization and the processes linking up all those people, managers will tend to focus on those things and the measures to make sure that that organization or that service is working well. And that's a machine-based paradigm. And that came from Taylor. So we still have this. And the way that we deal with change is through projects. When I go into organizations, what do I see? I see managers dealing with situations. They use logical methods. But there's also one other thing. It's not just a question of what are we used to, because that's what we applied last time and it worked. It's actually the fact that managers are really busy and they've got a whole list of things that they've got to do. So they start off with their list and as they work down their list, they've got time pressures and they actually very often can't do everything on the list. So it's actually about creating speed. It's actually about doing it yourself 
rather than using other people. It's about making decisions quickly rather than messing around and trying to come up with other people and their ideas and what we should actually be doing. As well as the other two situations, we have a third one. And what I see in organisations is we have critical situations, urgent situations, and the way that we deal with those is rapidly, through logical approaches. In organisations, then, there are three types of situations. Logical, complex, and critical or urgent situations. And the way to deal with urgent situations is to try and deal with the urgency first and then go back and understand logical and complex. What we end up doing in these types of organisations is that we end up firefighting. The public sector in the health service is a great example of this. Any large organisation in the private sector that you go into is very likely to be or at least to have some aspects of this. Even though the context of each is different, I tend to find that this is what's going on. And you, you tend to see the idea of the hero manager, the manager making the decisions, the manager dealing with the problems, the manager deciding. And when we work in organisations, this is one of my favourite pictures, we tend to find that we work in groups, in rooms, together, in very logical ways. We make decisions, we make plans, we design things. And when we opened the door, we found that outside of the door is reality, and that reality is very often complex. It's messy. It's not as we thought it was. And we try and apply the logic from the room into the outside world. And that doesn't work very well. We hope it does, but it doesn't. In that room, we have something that's familiar to us, that's safe, that's controllable. Outside of the room, we have things that are uncontrollable, that we can't really understand in to totality. So it becomes very uncomfortable. And actually, one of the things about dealing with complexity is that we should actually become comfortable with uncertainty, with not knowing. And that's one of the challenges that we face. So when I go into organisations um, and I look at what we do, we have the plans, we have rules, assessments, audits, checklists. If we don't have that, then what do we do? Actually, we develop different ways of learning and knowing and understanding. And these are more to do with complexity. And that's what we need to do if we want to become good at dealing with complexity. So we have to move on from Frederick Taylor. And actually, all the way through this, and even at Frederick Taylor's time, there were people who were dealing with complexity. They were dealing with it very well. But their voices were drowned out by the majority. And if you go into management training and development now, actually a lot of Taylor's ideas will still be there. And if you look at the modern world at the moment, it's speeding up. It's getting increasingly complex. And that's why complexity is so interesting to so many people at this time. And if you look at a lot of the organisations and services that we design, they're not all transactional. They're not all logical. They deal with the reality of social media and customers and variation. And how do we deal with that typically? Well, we narrow down that variation and we standardize. And that's not always the best thing. Sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. If you design services that should be designed around complexity and you design them around logical approaches, you will end up with significant amounts of extra waste in your service and the other thing that will happen is that when customers interact with you they will be presenting with repeat demands more cost at the front end that's what i see when i work in these organizations and that's the same with digital solutions we have to be careful of digital solutions 
because they are primarily designed around logical approaches. One example of this is an organization where we know the cost of everything. But how much do we know about the value? Very often value is difficult to put a cost to. And we like to have certainty. And th that's a great example where in many cases we don't have that certainty. When I look at organizations and the way that they change, what do we do? We create programs. We define what the outcome is going to be at the start. We decide how much it's going to cost and we decide how long it's going to take. And we put all that into a Gantt chart. And that's part of the problem. Actually, with a lot of change, is that the appropriate way? If we don't actually know what the output is going to be, we don't know how long it's going to take, and we don't know what work needs to be done to make that happen, then there's complexity in there. Then by applying these standard strict approaches may not help, in fact may increase cost and cause delays to change. Because a lot of change is actually about people. It's about behaviours. Now we all know that, but somehow we kind of like to ignore that. We like to say, no, no, this is logical. But the reality is, change is about people. And if we understand that and actually start to use that and start to use methods with regard to behaviours, then change can be a lot more successful than the pain that it very often is now. And when we do that, we can, we can really get some interesting, um, in fact, some startling outcomes with regard to measures and changes within an organisation. And these are some examples of the type of step change that happens when you switch from one to another. The results can really be outstanding. And one other thing, with logical approaches, we need to be explicit, we need to be formal, we, have, we develop a hierarchy of expertise. With complexity though, a lot of what we know and understand is not explicit, it's implicit. It doesn't correspond well to data. It's fuzzy. How do we understand that? It's more about networks and it's more about the knowledge that we have in our heads. Don't run away from complexity, embrace it. So these are the three main types and this is the framework that I use. And when I go into an organization, I look at the individual perspectives and I value those. I look at the different personalities and the different and the different ways that people are seeing the same situation. I look at the way people work together or don't work together. I look at the invisible barriers that are in an organization that stop people from working well. And when I work with organizations in this way, they change. For instance, the roles of frontline people become blurred. They're not so fixed. They start to overlap with each other. And the managers allow flexibility in their roles, in the way that they work. They empower them to be able to make decisions at the front line. The barriers and the strict lines between departments become blurred. Managers are not so protective of their people in their departments anymore. The measures change. So instead of measures forcing people to work along strict lines, those measures measure different things. So we're talking about changes in leadership, changes in management that are more flexible and more adaptive. So it's less about managers making decisions to managers ensuring that the right decisions are made. So the organization becomes a more human organization rather than a machine. Well, I hope that's helped. And in the description, there is a link to my website where I have more information. Thank you.